Hey there, welcome to NASA Launchpad. I'm your host, Justin Tully. All right, so when you hear the word NASA, what is the first thing you think of? Space, right? Yeah, of course, because NASA is by far the premier space agency in the world. But NASA does a whole lot more than just work in space, you know? Like what? Well, let me give you a hint. What do the letters of NASA stand for? It's the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, right? The first A in NASA is aeronautics. So that should tell you that NASA is heavily involved in the study of aircraft. In fact, virtually every commercial and military aircraft flown in the US since 1915 has benefited from testing done at NASA. Of course, most aircraft of the past and of today have a common denominator, the pilot. But lately, pilots don't have to sit in the plane. ROV, or remotely operated vehicles, are flown by pilots outside of the plane with the help of cutting edge technology. If we swing our attention over to NASA Dryden Flight Research Center, you'll see what I'm talking about. Dryden is where some of the world's most sophisticated and advanced aircraft are operated and studied. This is where some of the baddest aircraft ever flown have been based, including the X-1 that Chuck Yeager used to break the sound barrier, the X-15 which helped propel us into the space age, and the modified 747s that carry the space shuttle. Tons of new aircraft are found here too. One of these new innovations with wings is an unmanned aircraft system, or UAS, that is a redesigned Predator B. This plane has been given the Native American name Ikana, which in the Choctaw language means intelligence. Wonder what NASA is doing with Ikana and its fleet? Well, they definitely won't be flying any military reconnaissance or attack missions, so what else is there? Well, research. Ikana was designed to fly for up to 30 hours at a time and is able to reach altitudes above 12 kilometers, or 40,000 feet. With the wingspan of 20 meters, or 66 feet, the Ikana is able to carry about 900 kilograms, or one ton, under its wings alone. This amount of space and strength makes the versatile plane a perfect choice for carrying all types of instruments and devices for research and study. One of the instruments Ikana carries is the Autonomous Modular Scanner. This device operates like a digital camera. Unlike the cameras you're used to, however, this one has specialized filters that can detect infrared and thermal wavelengths. Although NASA uses this aircraft for all kinds of basic research, the Ikana is especially useful to help firefighters control wildfires. That's right, during the annual wildfire season out in the western part of the United States, Ikana can be seen flying high over the fires. It works like this. When a massive wildfire breaks out, it can be very hard to contain. So firefighters need up-to-the-minute information on where the hot spots are inside the fire. And they need to understand the progression of the fire over time. As you can imagine, it is pretty tough to get a clear image of these huge fires from the ground. And it can be even harder from the air due to all the smoke. This is where Ikana comes in. As Ikana circles overhead, the Autonomous Modular Sensor Wildfire Package can peer through thick smoke and haze to record all the hot spots the fire progression, and changes in temperature. These images are immediately processed on board the aircraft and then transmitted through a communication satellite to NASA Ames in Mountain View, California, where they are hosted on a web server. These images can then be read and overlaid onto Google Earth Maps at the Interagency Fire Center in Boise, Idaho, and local fire incident command centers all over the country. Fire incident commanders on the ground can view these images in three dimensions to help them route their firefighting resources where they need to go. Sounds complicated and time consuming, but it all happens in just minutes. This technology is helping to contain and control fires, saving millions of dollars in damage, and of course, saving lives too. And the Ikana is only one type of ROV. There are all sorts of unmanned aerial systems out there being studied at NASA, including two Global Hawks, which will be used for Earth science starting in 2009, and several small unmanned aircraft. But that's another show. Like in the past, as these aerial systems are studied and used for research, the technology they use will eventually be the technology they improve. And the next time you see a plane overhead, remember what the first A in NASA stands for. You got it, aeronautics. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Justin Tully. Catch you next time on NASA Launchpad.